I would say holiday just because, um, not that schemes couldn't be up in the next couple of weeks. I mean, let's do this. So foul territory and baseball America are partnering for some comprehensive content that you'll see on the baseball America YouTube channel that includes prospect profiles and the debut of a new show. And you might love the hot sheet emails that you get weekly via Baseball America. Now you will get a weekly digital show via Baseball America. JJ will be the star. I'll be along with him and Ben Badler, Carlos Colazzo, and many more members of the Baseball America fam. Live 3 o'clock Eastern time on Tuesdays on Baseball America's YouTube channel. If you're watching FT, just like we do on the FT Network, it'll take you right to the BA Hot Sheet Show, and we'll get into Jackson Holiday marinating in the minor leagues, an update on the top 100 prospects, and many more storylines. So first off, we're excited. JJ, I guess congratulations, or you know, let's Thank make this guys. partnership official. We're excited to work with the Baseball America team, which is an iconic brand. And we're excited to work with you guys. I mean, as you said, I've loved being on the show over the last year, kind of can plan to continue doing that as well. But it's exciting to to kind of be able to uh, to talk to our fans, talk to our viewers in a different way and and hopefully kind of provide insights into what you know what we love to do, what what you guys love to do, but what we love to do also, which is we want to tell you about the stars of tomorrow. We want you to know about them before everyone does. And that's what we're going to do every Tuesday at three o'clock. Yeah, we're excited about it. Absolutely. And I know Hot Sheet has been a very popular email in your world. Many people look forward to it each week. So, of course, we'll blow that out, but we'll also talk draft, international prospects, etc. cetera. Um, so can you give us a little preview of what to expect for the 3 o'clock show? Anything you're most excited to talk about or anyone from the VA team that you're most excited to speak with? No, I, I think I'm really excited. We have a new top 100 coming out at the end of this week. We're going to give a little sneak peek on that kind of you know, what, what's kind of to come with that. We've had a lot of us spending a lot of time on the backfields uh, in spring training over the last month. So we're trying to kind of give a little bit of the insights from that. But I'm also excited to have Carlos Colazzo on. We're going to talk about the draft and kind of the race for number one in a very jumbled, I would say very interesting year. Um, and by the way, with that, we also have uh, the release of the bonus pool. So we know who has the most money to spend, speaking of that 2024 draft. So we're going to dive into all of that on the show you said you're on the backfields did you actually see something that you did not think you were gonna see when you were on when you guys were all in those backfields where you're i mean i know it you guys you guys always you know you lean towards your ooh, james wood got sent down let's head over there because i gotta see him on the backfield well you saw him in the big league big league camp you didn't need to see him on the backfield who surprised you um well, it, it was cool to see Leo, Leo, Leo Dallas DeVries for the Padres because that's a 17-year-old, just turned 17, just signed, and they've already brought him up to the, you know, to the camp instead of keeping him back in the Dominican. So that was interesting. But more than that, I would say like Logan Evans with the Mariners, who at, at this time last year was kind of struggling through his fourth year in D1 uh, with Pittsburgh uh, and was kind of like, seemed like a kind of dime a dozen, uh, you know, weekend starter. And it was 91, 92, touching a three. And, and now you see him on the backfields, and he's a fire-breathing monster who's 96, 97, 98. Six pitches, you know, if you count the four seam and the two seam, which kind of made, you know, seems almost maybe a little bit too much down the road. But uh, but he's another Mariners uh, pitching success story, I think, of a guy who comes into Seattle, already had some feel, already had some command, and then they said, hey, why don't we give you three, four, you know, extra miles an hour? And – all of a sudden you're going, whoa, what, what is this dude? And, and where is he going to go now? No, oh, just three or four miles an hour. That's, that's neat. Scott said when he was, <laughs> when he was, when he was talking about all the stuff, the whole Jackson, Jackson holiday, is he marinating or rotting in triple a? And does he really need this much defensive work that he needed to be down there? I think as much as anything, I mean, you can be, understandably cynical about it but the, the the orioles are running a risk here like in that if they call him up and he does if they say they're going to keep him down there for a month and play some service time games and then he comes up and he does well enough to to, to be rookie of the year well then he's going to get that year of service time anyway i feel like as much as anything what they're doing is is kind of trying to 
to delay some of these decisions. The problems that they have in a lot of ways are, you know, we saw Jordan Westberg, who probably would be one of the guys who would lose out on at-bats. Jordan Westberg just hit the walk-off last night. They have too many guys for too few spots. And I, I often these things kind of, you know, solve themselves. We saw with the Rangers and, 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 and Young, you know, being the broken wrist yesterday where all of a sudden they need to fill in. Well, the Orioles are healthy right now, but I, I don't think he's marinating as much as they're kind of putting him on pause. And if that's for a couple of weeks, it probably doesn't hurt anything. He only has 700 pro at-bats. But if it's for too long, it, it does seem like – I don't think there's a ton that Jackson Holiday is going to learn from AAA that he can't learn – experiencing in the major leagues as well. This is a guy who's just incredibly advanced for his age and is probably not going to be overawed by any situation he gets put in. JJ, what's your take on Estuary Ruiz? I know the A's have had trouble <laughs> during their rebuild right now and the optics are fishy, but what do you think? It's hard for me to understand what they saw while he was hitting 429 over a weekend where you said, oh, okay, well, clearly now we have to send him down. You know, it wasn't something that we saw in spring training, and so we broke camp with a different roster. But now, now that we've seen him hitting 429 with a bracelet on his arm, um, you know, maybe now we need to work on this in a way that we didn't a week ago. <laughs> it does seem odd. It does seem fishy. And it just seems like another one of those uh, – those kind of almost unforced errors like that, that the A's uh, seem to be making, especially kind of at the, at the very high levels at the ownership levels over and over and over where you just kind of, even if there is kind of a, an innocent explanation, which again, seems hard to explain when he's hitting 429, you, you have to also understand you don't get the benefit of the doubt right now. And when you are a team that is, that has more errors than hits right now, um, sending down a guy who's hitting 429 does seem to be sending a very odd message. JJ, you're a conspiracy theorist like Scott. I get it. Totally, <laughs> to totally cool. What we, we hit on holiday already, but who's going to make their debut first, Paul Skeens or Jackson holiday? I would say holiday just because, um, not that Skeens couldn't be up in the next couple of weeks. I mean, he, his first, his debut kind of showed like, okay, if you want him to, to, to kind of get to the big leagues. It's not like this is going to be something that overwhelms him either. But but I look at Holiday and and I just kind of feel like that that, that call is coming really soon. Whereas with a pitcher, especially any pitcher, um, you know, you I can understand kind of a little bit more of uh, taking it a little slower, uh, taking a little bit of hesitation, especially, hey, credit to the Pirates, off to a good start. Uh, and, and their rotation right now looks so far pretty solid. So I, I think it's probably, I would say, holiday over schemes, but we're obviously one injury on either side away from kind of completely jumbling my prediction there. JJ will answer fan questions every week on Hot Sheet about their favorite prospects or their favorite team and the farm system that they're operating, but I'll mix in a couple right now. Trey says, what do you think about Jose de Paula from the Dodgers? I mean, that's it's, we have a piece up today uh that josh norris speaking of the backfields when he was kind of bouncing around and he was talking about just how that is one of the best young hitters in all uh, in all of the minor leagues and, and you saw it again this spring he is a guy when we do this top 100 update that uh, I, I think i would be keeping an eye on but this is yet again the dodgers are doing it the dodgers do everything well but one of the things they do very well is help really talented hitters get better and better and DePaul is a guy who is it would not surprise me at all if by the end of this year we're talking about him as one of the best hitting prospects in all the minor leagues okay and then one from patrick will we be seeing ricky tiedemann soon for the toronto blue jays their young pitching prospect i'm encouraged by the fact that tiedemann like the biggest thing about tiedemann has always been can he be healthy and can he be stretched out because they really didn't let him get stretched out last year so far, so good on that. He is healthy. He is starting. Um, I, I think that I, I would say kind of more of a mid-season ETA. Obviously, again, all of these are up to kind of a little bit dependent on team need. But I, I do think that they need to get him stretched out more. You, you want to see him going five, six before you bring him up to the big leagues unless 
you're going to just throw him in the pen. And I don't see why you would not want to try to start him. And, and with that being the case, I think he needs a little bit of time. Let, you know, let's let him get kind of lengthened out because he really never did that last year. And because of injuries, he really didn't get much, much of a chance to do that the year before that as well. The problem with all of these, a lot of these guys coming up through the minors, the way the development goes right now, especially if a guy has an injury, is you're, you're kind of heading into their rookie year and you're kind of asking the question of, well, how many innings are you really comfortable that you're going to be able to get from this guy? And the funny thing about that, we were talking about Skeens a minute ago, but I kind of feel like Skeens is maybe a little bit more prepared than some of the guys coming up through the minors because he was on a, it was once a week, but he was on a, I would describe it as a, a kind of a more of a, a heavier workload. I don't think it was an excessive workload, but he was going 100, 105, 110 pitches. He was going deep into games last year. Well, that's something that a lot of teams don't let their guys do in the minors. And if you if you combine going four or five innings a lot with getting shut down every now and then kind of for design uh, weeks of rest and all that, you, you turn around and a guy's got 80 innings. And if a guy's got 80 to 90 innings, how much can you be comfortable that you're going to get 140, 150 out of him in a rotation the year after that. JJ, I'm excited for this show, but I just want to tell you that when this show blows up like your like Baseball America blew up in the minor league clubhouses, guys waited for that bundle of papers. So they are going to be waiting for every Tuesday at three o'clock for you to say their name. So if you don't take that pressure upon yourself and give some to Scott, it's going to be too much because there is so many people waiting in the minor leagues, in the big leagues, whatever it is, fans to hear their player, their favorite player talked about. So I'm just saying, this is this is a lot of pressure on you. I, I think the plan that we need to do is is we're one every week we're going to rattle off 50 prospects for you know for an org. So you know we'll cover it you know over the course of the season. Uh, I'll no. give a you know a sentence on each of 50 guys, and we'll still by doing that be leaving out another 115 who get very annoyed about it. So yeah, you can run credit. I, I can feel the weight of that pressure. Do like <laughs> do like twenty three guys so that everybody in the org can be like, I knew it. I heard JJ was going to say my name at twenty four, so I'm totally <laughs> fine with that. I'm the twenty fourth prospect. He only goes through the top twenty three, so that's what that's what guys will do down there. That that's a good plan. <laughs> that's a good plan. Is just basically like, hey, we're going to roll out our. Oh wait, we ran out of time. You know, so yep. we would even have covered more, and you know that you would have been the next guy. <laughs> and he doesn't we have ran to carry out of time the end. on a show that doesn't have a time limit, you know. So. Exactly. Yeah. That's yeah. a good call. Yes. We'll run credits too at the end and say we love all of these prospects. We love your team's favorite prospects. But also he doesn't have to carry the team on his back because he'll have Carlos Colazzo, Ben Badler, and many others joining us. Those two will join us later today. JJ, again, so excited to have you on board, obviously, and be partnering with Baseball America, FT and BA coming up later on today with Hot Sheet. Thank you for joining us for the announcement, and we will see you very soon. Thank you, guys. Looking forward to watching the rest of the show. And then, again, everyone can just come on over, and Scott and I will just keep on going. Yes, exactly. That's the plan. So the rest of those questions will come up on uh, BA's hot sheet. We'll see you soon, JJ. Thank you, guys. Thank you. There it is again. JJ Cooper, Ben Badler, Carlos Colazzo, I'll be on there later, 3 o'clock Eastern time on BA's YouTube. Hey, everybody. Be sure to like and subscribe for more content. We're back here every weekday, all year long, so do not miss an episode. The videos are coming in all day. Here's another video you might enjoy. Baseball the way it should be covered.